ready to have your mind Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're having an awesome start to your day. I am doing something a little bit different on this video, but before we begin, I want you to do me a favor and click the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Don't forget to click the bell so you're notified when I upload anything else brand new. And if this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. Be sure and follow me on all my social media so you'll be up to date on everything that's Rockin' H Woodshop. Now, I know I've done a subject matter like this before, but what I'm going to employ in this video is something completely brand new. But it is the same subject matter, so stay with me on this. Don't think you're watching something that I've already done. And uh, I promise you'll have your mind blown. All right, guys, I wanted to bring something to your attention, which helped me save a lot of time on my last model. And uh, it required a ton of shelf pin holes. And I, I did something recently on the fastest method I knew on how to do shelf pin holes. And then somebody brought it to my attention how to use the ability of cut face. And cut face allows me to make holes, push and pull them, and they automatically do it themselves. And that is exactly what I was asking to find out how to do. So what I've done, and I'll walk you through this real quick, I've got a panel that's about 96 inches tall, three quarters of an inch thick, and about 18 inches wide. And I wanna make shelf pin holes starting from six inches from the bottom up to six inches to the top, two inches from either side. I've laid out some tape measure lines and if you are new to SketchUp and you're just now finding this video and you want to know how to do all this stuff, I've got a series on how to learn SketchUp. And it's very, very basic step-by-step -step instruction. And you'll be able to get to this point very quick and easy. So I'm going to start my hole right down here on this first intersection. And the way that cut face works is you have to make two holes. So I'll explain. I'm gonna turn my circle function on, which is right up here. And I'm gonna start by going into the component of the panel, because it's already been made a component. And having my circle function on, I can edit by making my first hole, which is going to be a quarter inch diameter or an eighth inch radius. So I'm typing in one slash eight in the bottom right hand corner and hitting enter. That is my quarter inch hole. So I'm gonna zoom in a little closer. In order to make cut face work, you have to have a circle a little bit bigger than the original hole. So you can just randomly make one. It doesn't matter what it is. So just a little bit bigger. Now highlight those two circles by going from the top left to the bottom right. If you was to go to the bottom right and the top left, it would highlight everything. And you don't want that because you only want the circles. Okay. So start from the top and go to the right. Now, with the circles highlighted, I'm gonna make these two circles a component themselves. And I'm just gonna call them hole one. So now that they have been made a component, I'm gonna go into it so I can edit it real quick and push and pull that center circle by turning the push-pull function on and I'm gonna drag it back 3 eighths of an inch. Now I'm gonna get out of that component while I'm still in the component of the panel, as you can see, I got dotted lines here. So I'm still inside the panel, but not inside the component of the holes, which is what I want. I just wanna highlight the hole by clicking on it once. And I'm gonna copy these by turning my move function on and going to the intersection of the tape measure lines right there. And I'm gonna click and drag up and hit option so it'll copy. And I'll hit one inch apart and then I've got 84 inches to fill so I'm going to type in 84 X and enter and as you can see all the holes are, are push and pulled the way I need them to be but I still got another set of lines over here so I'm going to copy the entire set of holes that I just did by zooming out to where I can see them all and I'm going to click from the top left go to the bottom right Make sure they're all in and you see they all turn blue. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so I can see both intersections. Turn my move function back on and then click, drag, option to copy and drag all the way over here. Make sure I'm on the intersection and drop. And as you can see, all of the holes are pushed and pulled. Now I wanna show you something. You, you might ask why you have to use the outer hole. Well, that's the only way that you can get this cut face function to work 
properly. So I'm going to show you real quick if I didn't do the extra hole and I tried to make these things components. So I'm going to go into the component of the panel just like I did before and I'm going to create a separate hole same way an eighth of an inch diameter or excuse me uh, radius quarter inch diameter and I'm going to save it as a component by highlighting it all just like that and I'm going to call it hole two and if I go to push and pull it now by going into the component like that there's nothing to push pull because there's no boundary to go backwards to I can pull it out but I can't push it in it's not going to eat into the panel. It is basically a component on top of a component. And that's not what I want to have. So I had to I have to define another outer boundary in order to push it into. And that's what that secondary circle is for. So having just one circle and saving it as a component won't make it cut face into the panel like you want it to. So I'm going to get rid of that circle now. And if you are decisively done with your hole all you have to do now is get rid of the outer circle so go into your component turn your eraser function on erase that outer line and boom you now have a hole that you can copy if you want to and drop and it will eat into the panel just like a normal hole but you have to have that outer circle first in order to accomplish that. Once the outer circle is gone, you can move these holes anywhere on the panel that you want. Pretty cool, huh? Well, is it blown? Did I lie? I hope you guys really found that enjoyable and if you are brand new to SketchUp, like I said, follow all of my prior videos. I'll take you step by step on how to get to know that software so much better and it is very easy to get the hang of, I promise. So guys, leave me some comments down below if you haven't done so already. Give me a like and let me know if you have done something like this in the past if you are already familiar with SketchUp. So thank you very much and I will see you on the next one. Boom!